chapter 1. First Samuel chapter 1. We're just going to read two verses here as we get started, but we are going to, uh, we're going to get into a, a lot of different uh, passages, and I want you to see some facts and figures here. <clears throat> Um, let's see, First Samuel chapter 1, beginning in verse number 27, 27, the Bible says, For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord, as long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord, and he worshipped the Lord there. Let's pray. God, I need you this morning. We all need you. Lord, but I in particular, as I try to convey the truths from your word, and God, I pray that uh, you'd eliminate, eliminate self from me. I pray that uh, you'd uh, cleanse me and, and help me to be a usable vessel even now. Lord, fill me with thy Holy Spirit. We to communicate what you have for us this morning. Would, be, would, we, would you help us to be focused in and honed in on your word? Bind the devil and any distractions there may be any business at home, any business personally, any, any, other, uh, any other things of, uh, that are less significant than you and your word. May you speak to our hearts this morning, uh, Lord, all month long, Lord, as we focus on worldwide evangelism, or may we consider the opportunity and the command of reaching the world with the gospel and how we can be a part Lord, I pray that you'd have your will and way in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Last March of our Faith Promise uh, Missions Month, as we get into this message, I want to talk to you about, I want you to see here, Faith Promise from the Life of Hannah. As we consider this uh, character, this uh, woman of God, I believe, um, a, uh, a person that exemplifies or shows a picture of faith promise. But let me start off here uh, with some of the uh, ideas, uh, some, of the, some of the progress that we made uh, this past year uh, for faith promise. Last March, our faith promise missions commitments totaled to $1,214 per month. That's actually what we committed as a church corporately. Uh, when we submitted our cards, they came in, we tallied them up. Uh, it was committed at $1,214 uh, per month for a yearly total of $14,568 for the year. So the commitments total up yearly, $14,568. All right, that is, uh, that's neat, that's exciting. The year prior to that, we had, I think, seven missionaries that we supported, or maybe the year before that, and uh, we had them in increments from, uh, like, we, half of them were about $50 a month, uh, the other half were about $100 a month. Uh, well, last year, the year before, we brought them all up to $100 a month, and then we were able to take on a new uh, missions work last year, I believe the Todd Monaghan family, if I'm not mistaken, and and we praise the Lord for that. How many noticed the uh, missions board out as you walk in? Does that make anybody excited? Um, so uh, that was fun to uh, to do that, and my wife was like, we need to do that as missions month is starting, and that'll be super exciting. So I'm glad I obeyed her and we got that up. But okay, so our actual, so you saw, you saw what we committed. Well, our actual for the last 52 weeks of missions giving exceeded the $14,568 for the year. And we actually have given $15,624. $15,624. Isn't that exciting? Let's, let's, I want to clap for that or something. Yeah. So, we praise the Lord for the progress there and uh, for, uh, for his faithfulness and seeing us through and, and being able to do that, of course, all, f all for him. Our missionary commitment in support uh, for this past year, uh, of course, I just mentioned, is $100 per month for each missionary. 
and that adds to a total of $9,600 for the year. So that is our actual support that needs to come in in order to care for those missionaries for the year, plus another $100 a month for our missions month. Of course, there are expenses and such and things that um, go into having a missions month. We want to care for our missionaries, be able to give them a love offering and different gifts. And uh, while I'm thinking of that, I, I forgot to give them uh, this here. wanted to give this in front of your kids, but uh, many of you put together different goodies. We researched, and I think my wife found out from your sister some of the, at least some of your goodies, but I don't think she knew what Dave's were. So uh, there's some goods there for you. And um, some other things here. We wanted to love on you. We heard you like fruit snacks and boom, chicka pop. And uh, here's some fresh strawberries with pesticides on them. <laughs> Just kidding. That, I think specifically that, it, yeah, we can filter it, wash them with your water machine there. Um, and so we want to be able to, to uh, take care of the uh, missionaries and speakers that we have coming in. I think this is the only missionary we have coming in that is not a missionary that is... Uh, uh, we have an evangelist coming in. We have a former pastor, like a pastor emeritus coming in. Uh, we do have the Bachmans coming in that uh, still are, they are uh, active on their mission field and such. But uh, we want to be able to take care of them. And so we add $100 a month to our missions fund. And so um, the, the actual of what we have designated is $10,800 to care for our missions work that that God has led us to be able to, to care for at this time. And so the year totals in expenses for missions in 2022, the actual of what we spent, now this is including guest speakers. We just recently had Brother Ted Spear with us, and so that was neat that you mentioned him. Um, so we have folks like him, forget others that we've had in. The Osgoods we had in, and I know that I believe there were others as well. So our actual outgo for the year was 13,792, okay? Our total commitment that came in was 15,624. Our total outgo has been 13,792. Now, as I was considering these numbers here and praying and thinking, God, would you, would you lead us? Would you help us to move forward? A number that I think the Lord has given to me for the year that I think the Lord has maybe put on my heart is 17,000. I'm praying that God would allow us, allow us to exceed, to meet 17,000 this year in commitments and, and given uh, so we can increase our vision. We can increase our faith. We can increase our influence for worldwide evangelism and to be able to help start some of these churches, be able to help uh, share the gospel with places that we uh, are not able to go to. And so the total for that, the breakdown of that, if we were to do that, that would mean that we would need $1,416.66 per month coming in in order to reach the goal of $17,000 for the year, okay? So we would need to hit... Uh, uh, 1,416, maybe we need to round that up. I don't like the 666 at the end of it. Um, Brother Bobby would have already cared for that if, it was, uh, if he was doing it. Um, <clears throat> so let me give you some scenarios here. Now, now I'm not big on these scenarios because I don't know how much faith is involved in trying to manipulate and work it all out, but I think it does help to some capacity. If 14 families gave $100 per month, we'd make that $1,400, obviously, uh, per, per month. If seven families gave $200 a month and another four families gave $100 a month, or individuals, and three gave $50 a month, we would make that $1,400 a month. If seven families gave, I think these numbers are right. You may correct me afterwards, okay? Um, if seven families gave $100 a month and 14 people gave $50 a month, we'd make it. Am I right there? If seven families gave $100 a month and 14 people gave 50, we'd make uh, the total amount there. And so again, I don't know that figuring it all out like that is showing great faith, but I do believe this. I do believe that if 
everybody was obedient to do what God put on their heart to do, uh, we'd please him. And so that's my, that's my encouragement. That's my challenge this morning. Take that card and begin now, maybe at the invitation. I want to encourage you to come to the altar and begin praying. God, would you lay a figure on my heart? Would you, would you speak to my heart concerning what you want me to do uh, for worldwide evangelism this year? And so um, do what God wants you to do, and everybody should be doing something. That's how it should be in regards to all ministries of the church for the most part. They say that ministry is 20% of the people uh, doing 80% of the work. It, it ought not be like that. We all have a part. We're all part of the body, and God wants to use us, use us in our own unique uh, in a particular way. And so uh, this is what God says regarding faith, promise, and ministry. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians 8. Now, be with me here. 2 Corinthians 8. Go ahead and turn there. Let's see what God's Word says. 2 Corinthians 8. Hold your place, of course, in, uh, in uh, 1 Samuel. But 2 Corinthians 8. This is a, a well-known faith promise chapter, 2 Corinthians 8. But this is what God says concerning ministry. In verse number 13, he says, For I mean not that other men be eased and ye be burdened, but by an equality that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a, a supply for your want, that there may be equality. So there ought to be equality. Not everybody is able to give the same amount. And I'm not saying everybody needs to give the same amount in faith promise, but there ought to be an equality of ministry work. And we ought to be, we ought to be using our spiritual gifts and talents equally for the cause of Christ. And so um, this morning, I want to talk to our church about what it will take for us to continue our efforts for worldwide evangelism, to move forward for the cause of Christ. Often we're guilty of using some terms that, that we may understand, but those to whom we're talking might not always understand. I think it's important that we carefully define some of this. What is faith promise? What is grace giving? Faith promise and grace giving are similar terms that are used for this method by which we give uh, to worldwide evangelism at this church. But I think it's important that we carefully define these terms in order to get a clear understanding that we're all pulling on the same rope, that we're all moving forward and on the same page for the cause of Christ. And so we encourage folks here uh, to use this concept of faith promise. And when we give to missions at this church, that's how, that's how I'm trying to steer. That's how I'm trying to lead in that capacity. And there are several reasons, but I'm just going to cover uh, a few of those here uh, this morning. Now, there's, there's no wrong way to give, okay? And uh, there are different ways that we can give, and I'll give you some of those here. Um, you, you can get another job and use those funds in order to fund missions, and that's a way to give. Uh, there's a myriad of other ways that you can you can you can sell something and use those funds to go towards worldwide evangelism. There is a, a percentage of your income that uh, I know people have given in that capacity. And uh, but but let me say this: you can't be obedient to God's command to going into all of the world and preaching the gospel to every creature without giving to missions, without giving to worldwide evangelism. And so we want to be obedient to God. We want to fulfill the Great Commission. We want, to, uh, we want to have our part in seeing souls saved and lives changed where we can't go uh, for uh, the cause of Christ. And so if a Christian is not giving to worldwide evangelism, they are not obeying God's Great Commission of worldwide evangelism. And so if you don't, if you don't give to worldwide evangelism, how are you reaching other states? with the gospel. If you don't give to worldwide evangelism, how are you reaching Canada? I think of uh, our Judea. How are you get reaching Mexico? How are you reaching places where you can't go? I, I, it's exciting to see, follow the Boltons as they travel on their uh, journey. Recently, they were in Dubai. Man, we support them. We have an opportunity to see uh, the, the, the seed of the gospel sown in Dubai. That's awesome to be sown in Oman. I don't know much about Oman, 
but um, but I'm I'm thrilled to be able to help them be a part of that. I know that they've seen souls saved, and the Lord is using them there. Uh, I think of uh, the Philippines and Thailand and. Haiti and Barbados and where we already support missionaries and all over the states. Brother Todd was just in Florida preaching in different university campuses and seeing people saved. He was just preaching up in Michigan uh, last night at a beast feast and saw uh, three uh, folks raise their hand for salvation that they trusted Christ as Savior. And I have an investment in that. I have dividends that are that are being reaped uh, because I, I am invested in that and in our missionaries and I love them all. And uh, we get to see them on that beautiful missions display as you walk into the left now uh, on a regular basis. And we get to pray for them. And, and it's just a privilege to be able to give to worldwide evangelism. And regarding giving, we ought to give obediently. We ought to give obediently to God through our local New Testament church, first of all, through tithes, and then secondly, through offerings. And I want you to notice in 1 Corinthians, turn there, 1 Corinthians. Chapter 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, and starting with, with, with the tithe is where it all begins. I believe in the principle of the tithe through Scripture. It was pre-law, it was during law, and is post-law. We see here post-law in 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Verse number 2, the Bible says this, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse number 2. The Bible says, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And we ought to give uh, it through as a tithe. We ought to give as offerings as well so that others can go preach the gospel in places where we cannot go. Now, I want you to turn back to 2 Corinthians 8, 2 Corinthians 8. And uh, I wasn't planning on finishing the message this morning. We're going to bring it over into uh, tonight as well. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse number 3, we see this, this above the tithe giving, I believe. And, and in addition to 2 Corinthians 8, verse number 3, it says, For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. And so we read here in this passage in context here, these churches of Macedonia, they gave an offering so that Paul, Barnabas, Silas, uh, Timothy, I believe, Titus, and so that others could go preach the gospel in, in an area that they weren't. They, they, they didn't stay in Jerusalem. They were sent to other regions of the world to preach the gospel, and those that sent them had an investment in the work that they did for the cause of Christ. And so, um, let's see here. I do believe that faith promise is a biblical concept taught primarily in the New Testament and one of the primary passages, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. However, as with many uh, Bible truths, it can also be found in the Old Testament as well. And that's where we pick up here in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1. One of, the, one of my favorite characters, uh, Hannah, uh, the godly mother, I believe, of, of my favorite character, Samuel. But uh, in the Old Testament, and this is an illustration of this New Testament truth, she practiced faith promise in regards to asking God for a son. And we're going to see here the, these, these steps here. She asked God for a son. I want to encourage you to take notes, take your bulletin, and write this down. There's, a, there's about five lines for you to take notes here to, to write this uh, nine-page sermon. Uh, but um, I'm going to give you the steps here. In, in case you're not able to come back tonight, I want to encourage you to do so, but in case you're not able to, I'm going to give you the full message here, the points, and they are these. She asked God for a son. She trusted him for the son. She received the son and then returned the son back to God, and her son Samuel was one of the greatest men in the Bible. Now, that's not part of the outline there, but, and that is the concept of faith promise in a nutshell. Asking God for, number one, 
trusting God for, number two, receiving from God, and then giving back to God. That is faith promise. We have the privilege to exercise this. We have the privilege to be involved here and this morning. So now to our text. And I'm going to get at least one point off here this morning. First Samuel chapter 1, beginning of verse number 27. Turn there if you will. Turn there. Turn to our text. The Bible says this. Hannah said this as she got her prayer answered uh, from the Lord. She says, For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord, and he shall worship the Lord there. God, I need you. I pray that you'd help me. Help me to communicate your words here this morning. Lord, fill me. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to notice with me this morning the elements or the steps of faith promise. Number one is this. First point, number one, faith promise is asking something from God. Faith promise is asking something from God. As you have that faith promise a missions commitment card there. We are asking the Lord, God, what would you have me to do this year for worldwide evangelism? And I want you to notice faith promise here in verse number 11. The Bible says, and she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child. She prayed to God and she said, God, if you'll give me this, God, if you'll give me this man child. And this morning, I want you to know that faith promises asking God. And I want to encourage you and challenge you of this morning, not just to figure it all out in your head, but ask God because he wants to do exceeding abundantly above anything that you can do physically, fleshly, and personally. God wants to be involved in answering your prayer. We see here that faith promises asking something from God, number one, particularly. She asked God particularly or specifically. She says, God, if you'll give me a man child, God, would you give me a son, not a daughter? Nobody wants a daughter, a little sniveling, whiny, little uh, prima donna girl that's going to fuss and temper tantrum and things like that. No, uh, but she said specifically, did she not ask God particularly, would you give me a man child? And this morning we get to ask God, God, would you give me a specific number? Would you specifically tell me what you want me to give, what you want to give through me rather, particularly lay a figure on my heart here, particularly when we desire a particular answer, we should ask it particularly. Folks, God cares and he rejoices over giving us the exact answers to our prayers. It gives him more glory when we see that he's answered our prayers specifically, does it not? How many times you probably have prayed for something? God, would you, God, would you help me to feel better? God, would you help me help, help, help this person to, to be healed? God, help me. And then we forget about it. We, we ramble it day after day, perhaps. And I'm not, I'm not trying to discourage you from praying to God. But God desires for us to talk specifics. God desires to know our specific cares, our specific desires. And Hannah didn't just ask for a child. She asked for a, a man child. She asked for a boy uh, specifically. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 3, the Bible says, For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. What's, what's the Bible saying here? Well, it says they were willing in their own power, but then God came along and he supplied the need in his power, and he's got more power than any of us could ever have, and God is willing to answer our prayers specifically. These churches of Macedonia, they were able to accomplish beyond their human reasoning and beyond their power because they asked and they trusted in God. Faith promises asking something from God particularly, particularly. She was specific. Now, why did she want a man-child? Why did she ask for a boy? Why did she ask? I think there's probably plenty of reasons, but she wanted this man-child because she says, I want to give him back to you. All the, Not that women can't serve the Lord, but in order to serve the Lord in the capacity that Samuel served the Lord, 
needed to be a man, needed to be a boy, and so she asked for this man-child particularly. Folks, when we ask God for a particular prayer request, now this is what we do sometimes. We'll ask God. We'll ask God, and then God comes along and he answers our prayers, but it wasn't so specific, and so we're like, yeah, and God answered my prayer, but maybe it was just a coincidence. Maybe that's just how it was all going to pan out anyways. Do we pray specifically? Do we pray specifically? God cares, and God loves you. God cares about the intricate details of your life. He's not just a generic God answering generic prayer requests. He cares about every aspect of your life, and faith promises a way for him to take interest even more as you desire to do something for him. I wonder, have we ever been so burdened that we say, God, would you, would you help me to do more for worldwide evangelism? God, would you help me to be a part so that I can see more souls saved in that country, more souls saved over there? Man, I want to be able to contribute to some water machines so that as they go on this mission trip, I can be like, man, would you tell me about it? Tell me, tell me what it's like when you preach to somebody, Brother Dave, and you shared the gospel with them in the Solomon Islands, and they came and they called on the Lord, and then you gave them good water. And that's awesome. I want to be a part of that. I want to pray specifically for souls to be saved in the Solomon Islands as they take uh, this trip, and then all of these other places in the world where these water filtration, uh, filtration systems can go. But she prayed particularly Faith promises asking particularly. Faith promises asking purposefully. Purposefully. Look at verse number 11 again here. She said, God, if you'll give me a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head, the, uh, the uh, Nazarite vow. And uh, Hannah's purpose was this, was to give him back to God. Her desire was that she could have a son so that she could uh, that he could serve God all the days of his life and give him back to God for the cause of God. I wonder this morning, what is our purpose for asking God to supply a particular amount of money for faith promise? I don't think that's a selfish thing to do. I don't think that is, a, uh, that is something that we would consume upon with our own lust. I suppose it could happen asking God for a certain amount and, but God does say he won't give us the things we ask because we're, if we consume upon with our own lusts. But, uh, but I think uh, asking God for a faith promise, it would definitely glorify God, wouldn't it? It's been said that God will give through us what he won't necessarily give to us. And as we're asking God, Lord, would you lay a figure on my heart? In doing so, God, I'll give it back to you for this next year here through faith promise. In worldwide evangelism. And this is a biblical principle concerning giving found in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, especially applicable to worldwide evangelism. The Bible says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom, for with the same measure that ye meet withal, it shall be measured to you again. And God will bless us as we give, but, but uh, that shouldn't necessarily be our motivation of God's blessing, but God certainly comes through uh, when we are obedient to do His will in our lives. Now, I don't think that asking God for a faith promise is something that is going to be consumed upon with our own lusts. Faith promise is asking God for something particularly. Faith promise is asking God for something purposefully. And then faith promises asking God for something persistently. Look here at the passage again, verse number 12. We're done. Verse 12. And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she had spake in her heart only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. The Bible says that Hannah poured her heart out to God. It wasn't just the Lord, now I lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord my soul to keep. Bless mama, bless grandma, grandpa. 
bless the food. No. She prayed persistently. She prayed purposefully. She said, God, if you'll do this. She, she prayed so hard, the priest thought she was drunk. I have never thought anybody in here has been so, you know, involved in praying to God that you've been drunk. We need more. We need some drunkards in here, okay? We need to call out to God, and God desires to hear from us. By the way, every Saturday evening, we are here praying. The men are calling out to God. God, would you bless this family? God, would you bring them in? God, would you help us to love on them where they're at? God, would you meet their need from God's word? But she prayed persistently. Hannah poured her heart out to God. She was in bitterness of soul, the Bible says, with such desire to, to get this man-child. And, and I think about this story. You want this child, Hannah. Why do you want this child so bad? You just want to give him back to God? You know, if I was Hannah, I'm glad I'm not. You know the story, familiar with the story. She called out to God, asking him for a man-child. God answered the prayer, gave her back the, the child, and then uh, she, it came time now. All right, God answered the prayer. Now you do your end of the bargain, Hannah, and bring him up to the temple. She didn't get to see him very often after she brought him up to the temple, or the, yeah, the temple uh, to Eli the priest after that. I'm thinking, man, that is, that's tough to, to finally get your prayer answered and to spend a little amount of time. The Bible says when he was weaned, after he was, after he was done off the bottle, that, that's what I understand it to be, and uh, brought the... If I was Eli, I'd be like, no, you need to raise him a little bit longer. I don't want that kid yet. Make, get him potty trained first. You know, but, uh, but she brought the child back. And I think of the answered prayer that she got there, man, what a selfless prayer that she prayed. She, she could have been tempted, okay, God, I'm, and I'm just going to keep him. I'm going to keep him another year. I'm going to keep him another couple of years. But no, she was obedient. God kept his end of the bargain, and then she gave him back to the Lord, to the temple, to Eli the priest there. And so uh, sometimes we ask God, and then we forget about it, but how persistent we are in prayer about it, about a, whatever we ask for will reveal how important it is to us. I think of several, you know, we prayed for a couple Two, almost three years that I've been here, God, would you end Roe versus Wade? God, would you end Roe versus Wade? And God answered our prayer. God answered our prayer, did he not? Wasn't that exciting to be? I mean, we were praying, God, I was praying, in my generation, would you allow us to see this ridiculous thing in? God answered the prayer. Been praying for a kidney for Kelly. A kidney for Kelly. How would you bring a kidney for Kelly? Would you bring a kidney for Kelly? Kelly needs a kidney. God, would you? And we believe he's answering prayers, and it's in where there's progress being made. Uh, it's not over yet, but keep on praying. But we're praying specifically. Do we, are we continuing praying? The amount of time we spend in prayer will reveal how important to us it is uh, to us. Are you still praying for that loved one to be saved? Is it that important to you? I prayed, told you, 17, 16 years for my dad to get saved, longer than that. My dad got saved. Faith promises asking for God something particularly, purposefully, and persistently. And then number two, let's bow. Father, I thank you for your love for us. I thank you for all that you do for us. God, I thank you for the privilege it is to be one of yours. God, and that you care about all the intricate details of our lives. Lord, may we live for you. God, may we see the need. God, would you burden our hearts individually and as a church for the need that there is to reach the world with the gospel. God, would you help us corporately move forward for the cause of Christ? God, would you meet the needs of all of these folks that uh, you have assembled? I pray that you'd help them. I pray that you give them wisdom. I pray that you give them discernment. God, would you have your will and way in our lives this morning? Begin the work now as we continue this month. 
a faith promise. Would you help us? Would you clarify? Would you speak to our hearts from your word, from the different speakers and presentations, and, and uh, especially from your word? With heads bowed and eyes closed this morning and nobody looking around, we will have a time of invitation. Piano will play here. And I want to ask you, I want to ask you as we start this missions month, let's be proactive. Let's engage even now this first service and let's consider, let's ask the Lord what he would have us to do.